This is David Kaplinger from Capsule to Cone, and today we're checking out the amplified instrument processor from Corniff Audio. So let's dive right in. I've reamped these guitars with a Fortin 33 boost overdrive into an EVH 5153. That's got a Zool in the noise gate from Fortin, and it's going into a Sur reactive load box with some IRs from Jeff Dunn that I'll link below. I think they're really awesome. It's a blend of a 57 and a 421 on a Mesa oversized cabinet. And it's pretty raw, so this is a great place to where we've dialed in the guitars, reamped them, got them sounding really good with the mix, but we're going to take it to the next level with this plugin. So I'm going to let you hear what I've already dialed in, and then we're going to open a brand new instance of the plugin, kind of explore it, and see what we can get out of it. Hopefully in five or ten minutes, really get something that sounds awesome. Here we go. Yeah, so it sounds great, and this is the guitars that we started with. So it sounds really good, but there's definitely some stuff that we can kind of clean up. So let's dig into this plugin. So you can see it here. Um, it's got a bunch of stuff, and we're going to run down that really quick. I'm not the kind of person that goes into um, extreme detail with stuff. I kind of just want to, you know, work and create sounds with products and, and help improve my mixes rather than worrying about what capacitor is, is doing what. But you can really dive in with this plugin, and that's really cool in this advanced tab over here. So first thing, um, let's just kind of go in order of what I'm hearing with the guitars. So let's focus on this really chuggy section. This is a very Meshuggah inspired song. Um, I think it was an eight string guitar and it's definitely got that, uh, for lack of a better term, genty vibe. And I want to make sure that that's accentuated and shaped a little bit to fit in the mix. So um, first thing I usually would do is do some filtering. So we've got a high pass and low pass filter here. Let's kind of dial that in. Sounds great, just trying to get rid of a little bit of that fizz right out of the gate. You can see even that has cleaned it up. The next thing it has that's really cool is this proprietary signal processing. Um, it's kind of a secret sauce of the plugin. And in the more advanced tab, when you click the Corniff logo, you've got some options for that. So we're going to cycle through that and turn that on and off. I'm actually going to do this with everything going in the mix. So I really like that what that's doing, but in the mix, it's, it's getting a little bit dark and almost too warm. So let's check in the advanced tab and see what the different modes sound like. So just like it says, this tape-inspired option, a lot of bottom end, pretty rounded. Same with the tube one. This one's really aggressive and what we're going for, but it's maybe a little overkill so we're going to adjust it with this transient response knob and then now we can dive in and solo the guitar i think that sounds great we can bypass it on and off and hear that just with filtering and that proprietary signal processing it's sounding pretty sick already The next thing I'm hearing is there's definitely some um, fizzy frequencies and harsh frequencies, and that's probably my favorite thing with this plugin. Is this insufferable mid-range filter? 
It's it's just some sort of notch EQ. I'm not sure exactly what it's doing, but the way it works makes it really easy to use. So we've got a listen button. Um, we obviously are going to turn it on. We're going to be able to sweep those frequencies, decide how many octaves we're going to cut out of that frequency. And then we can even compensate if the guitars get a little dull with this high frequency compensation. So let's check that out. I just wanted to say you might want to shield your ears because it definitely blasts you with that uh, annoying frequency. So here we go. So that's the one that's annoying me. It's in that 4 or 5K area. But I also hear it in the lower octave too, so we're going to use the three octave range and really kill it. And you can hear that fizz is gone. What we want to make sure is we don't want to neuter the guitars and make them sound really lame. So let's uh, adjust this reduction. It's a little dull, but I think that feels good. Let's hear it in the mix. And we're going to use the high frequency compensation knob to add some back in. Literally feels like a completely different guitar. So, so far we've used the filters, proprietary signal processing, and the mid-range filter. And we're already, you know, it almost sounds like a finished guitar already. I honestly don't know how I've ever mixed anything without this, so it's pretty rad. Um, I'm going to adjust the stereo width now, which is pretty sweet. This widener sounds really good. You have to be careful with wideners on guitar because it can, it can cause some weird phase issues, make your guitar sound really weird, even if it's doing something cool and making it, making it pretty wide. So let's mess with that. wild and we're making things a little bit louder so I'm going to turn this trim down so we can compare better so the next couple things that we're going to dive into are the analog channel variants and the compressor I'm going to sweep through some of these random settings and it's going to kind of mimic having your guitars across different channels on a console, which obviously would be unique. It's not a huge change, but I like to hit the random button and kind of find one that sounds cool and, and leave it there. You know, if you heard any difference, that's awesome. I can kind of tell the top end changes, the stereo image changes. It's very, very subtle. And then now we're going to move on to the compressor. And let's hear how that sounds. It's both subtle and exciting, which is kind of what you want when compressing heavy guitars. I'm looking for a little more pick attack and then also evenness across the spectrum. I'm going to play with the release knob and see if speeding them up kind of throws the guitars out of the speakers a little bit. I also tend to like the compressor post-EQ because then when I, I push EQ into the compression, it kind of smooths it out a little bit.
that feels like it's doing a little something. I like it. Um, I really like this compressor. I usually use the Waves API 2500 for guitars, but any more than a dB on that, and it starts sounding a little funny, and it can almost be too aggressive where you hear the guitars kind of pumping, and I think this is, this is a really good spot and a really good compressor for heavy guitars. So the next thing we're going to jump into is the EQ, but I want you to hear what we've done so far, bypassed on and off. I mean, I thought the original tone was great, but that makes it sound awful because this just sounds so good. And I'm just, it cannot wait to start using this on mixes. Okay, the last thing we're gonna dive into is some EQ. And since I'm not hearing major problems with these guitars, I'm gonna focus on shaping it in the mix. So let's make sure the balance of it's good. For this style of song, I think that feels pretty good. Um, what I hear is a little more excitement in the top end and maybe cleaning up some frequencies around 150 hertz would be great. So let's start with that. You can hear some cab resonance there. So let's cut out a couple dB. That cleans up the guitars. We don't want to lose too much of that because it's obviously a low tuned instrument, but I think that'll sit a little bit better with the bass. And then now a little more mid range overall, I think would be cool somewhere around the one 2K area. Again, we're gonna have to be subtle with it so that we don't make the guitars harsh or honky. Let's give that a shot. That's just bringing the guitars forward a little bit. Let's check that out in the mix. I really like that. And then a little bit of top end air would be cool. We might play with the low pass, um, but let's check that out. We've also got a frequency dependent reduction on the back here. It's pretty much a dynamic EQ. So we can play with that a little bit. That would be cool for around that 150 area if you needed to cut some more. I don't think it needs it, but we can check it out right now. Get your guitar super duper tight. You can see it's only grabbing on those palm mutes. That's pretty dope. Man, it just sounds so good. So we've done EQ, proprietary signal processing, mid-range filter, stereo widening, VCA compression, dynamic EQ, all in one plugin. I don't think we've overcooked it. And this is a before and after with the plug-in on and off. It's incredible. And again, in the mix. Turn it down a little bit there. We adjusted some of the EQ, and I think that's sitting really, really nice.
Thanks for joining us, guys. Like and subscribe if you like content like this. Again, this plugin is absolutely amazing. I encourage you to check it out. Dan Corniff is one of my production and mixing heroes, and he has created an incredible tool. It makes mixing guitars really, really simple. You know, when you have plugin chains of five, six, seven, eight plugins long on guitars, it's really easy to overcook them and just make them start to sound weird. And I feel with all the tools available in this, you're able to do anything that you need to to create the space the guitars need in the mix, but at the same time, it keeps things really simple and sounding great. So I know it's replacing a ton of processing for a lot of mixers out there, and it's definitely gonna be doing the same for me. Check back in for new videos soon from me and Matt, and thanks for joining us.